Welcome folks, I'm Dr. Charles Parker at Core Psych Blog. If you were thinking about really finding out more about how to specifically treat and diagnose attention deficit disorder, you've come to the right place. What I'm going to do is just outline for you quickly an essential point about titrating, that is dosing the medications for ADHD effectively. Now, I think this is one of the largest, most frequently experienced problems that I've seen. Many people are doing it right. I'm not casting a big black blanket over everybody here. I'm saying that there's a, there is a problem in terms of how we dose the medication effectively. And in just these few minutes, I'm going to give you a very handy idea about specifically how to do it. And I'm going to outline most of the medications and tell you what they're DOE duration of effectiveness. No, it's not a deer. It's duration of effectiveness. I write down DOE on every med check. All the medical people that work with me do exactly the same thing at every single med check. And all the patients that I see come in and report to me every single time I see them, the DOE, because I'm very, very precise about getting those medications exactly adjusted very specifically. Now, what is the DOE? What's the duration of effectiveness? All of the stimulant medications for ADHD, except Stratera, which is really not a stimulant, all of the stimulant medications for ADHD have a certain half-life. That is, they live throughout a certain part of the day and they're gone. They don't stay all day. And now, most of the antidepressant medications and a lot of the other psychiatric medications have 24-hour half-lives. So you take it in the morning, it lasts till the next day, no problem. But what happens is with stimulants, it lasts only a portion of the day. And those of you who've been around for a while know that Ritalin, for example, plain Ritalin lasts four hours. You give it at seven, it's out at 11, maybe 12. Give it at 12, it's out at four. Give it at four, it's out at eight. Generally speaking, that's the half-life of immediate release Ritalin. And that is the reason that immediate rele release Ritalin is so completely outdated, as is immediate release Adderall, as is immediate release dextroamphetamine. Why are they outdated? Because the it's not a convenience factor. Folks, it is, no matter what the insurance company tells you, it's not a convenience factor. It's a compliance factor. It's that we have recognized that ADHD exists Throughout the day, it's not that we just treat school and kind of hope that the family is okay in the evening. So we're going to let the family go and really treat school? No, this is old, old news. So what we've been doing, because the medications have had increasingly longer half-lives with less stimulating ups and drops associated with them. So there's no up and downs. As we go further down the road with the drug companies, and my feeling is, God bless them, they are doing a great job. I don't care what's going on in the press, the public. The real problem is that we're really not using the medications as precisely as we should, so there are some downstream effects, but the medications are good medications. So I just think we need to be more informed about how we're using them. That's why I'm telling you about them. So the bottom line here is, back to the half-life point. So you have immediate release Ritalin is about four hours. You have dextroamphetamine, which might be five to six, plain dextroamphetamine, five to six. So you have to get it at least twice a day. Adderall XR, pardon me, Adderall is like a plain dextroamphetamine. It's about five to six hours. So you have morning, noon, and then sometime in the afternoon. Very frequently, it's three times a day. If a person has long working hours, an adult. Now, what some people love is the precision. They can adjust it here and adjust it there, but what really happens operationally is compliance goes down the window and big sections of the life of the individual don't get addressed or they get poorly addressed and the individual comes back and say, I can't understand why this or that is happening. Well, did you take the third dose? Did you take the second dose? Are you taking in the afternoon? No, I'm really not. I kind of prefer not to. We have all this manipulation of medication going on, which is counterproductive and is against medical advice because we all think that it should be used very consistently. But what happens is with the immediate release uh, medications, people can just pretty well dose it the way they want. And that's why there have been some abuse of the medications because they're also mechanically released. They go into the system very quickly and cause that buzz. 
So what's been happening with medications, the duration of effectiveness, back to the beginning, DOE has been extending more and more. So we had Daytrona, which is a methylphenidate patch. Yeah, it was a problem with sticking it on and rashes and so on and so forth. We have a number of people that do very well with Daytrona. What was good about Daytrona? Put it on in the morning. It lasts all the way until the evening. It's very good, and you don't have to take it by mouth. So Daytrona was a step up. I've been a strong devotee of uh, Adderall XR for a long period of time, dialing it in very, very carefully. A lot of times we get Adderall XR by increasing the morning dose so that it would last longer through the day, not monkeying with doses through the day, but just giving that morning dose up. Very frequently we take it 10, sometimes 12 hours, rarely 12 hours, but off, you know, it happened. It, we, we could significantly get a number of people to 12 hours, but very often what we had to do was to trim them up with an immediate release, shorter acting half-life in the afternoon. Now, big no-no in this regard is mixing medications. Do not mix amphetamine products with methylphenidate products. Now, that sounds like a complete, forgive the expression, I hate these cliches, no-brainer, but there are individuals out there that have been doing that. It's not good. Those two medications don't work well together. It's not the resolution of the problem. If you're using an amphetamine product, and an extended release amphetamine product, it should be a immediate release amphetamine product. My preference, of course, is really getting one that lasts for a DOE, a duration of effectiveness, that can run 12 to 14 hours. Now that is the deal. So why did I like Adderall XR? Because it outlasted Concerta. Why do I like Vyvanse? Because it outlasts Adderall XR. So what can happen with Vyvanse, which I've got another tape about because I was talking about it, but the bottom line is, if you give the Vyvanse in the morning and go up by 10 milligram increments, you can significantly increase the afternoon dose by two hours. So if they're on 30 milligrams in the morning, it runs to three in the afternoon. Yeah, that covers school, but that dose is not going to be an adequate dose until the duration of effectiveness of that medication is adequately reached. So then what happens if you shoot for 12 hours, 11, 12 hours, the dose during the day is going to be in a sufficient titration, a level that it works well and you have a good effective range it, it just and, and very few side effects. So the problem occurs if we go past the extended duration of effectiveness. Pardon me. I said I was going to name the other medications. Metadate, uh, Ritalin LA, Concerta. Concerta sometimes can run 10 hours. It's mainly an eight-hour product. All those methylphenidate products are basically eight-hour products. Um, Adderall XR, you could extend it a little bit further by increasing it. Go maybe, as I said, 10, sometimes 12. But the real issue is two or three prescriptions are two or three dosages during the day. And the problem with ADD is really keeping people compliant. So I'm a big advocate. I've gone on here for eight minutes. I'm sorry about that. The bottom line is it takes a while to really think about the duration of effectiveness. We should all be writing it on every med check. You should be thinking about it if you're taking medication. Because if it's dialed in correctly, you have very few side effects. Your elbows don't hit the side of the therapeutic window. You're not popping out the top and bumping your head. You're not inadequately adjusted in dosage by hitting the bottom, and you go right through that window very precisely. That's what DOE, duration of effectiveness, <laughs> is all about. Hope it works for you. Talk to you later.